All right, so about a week ago, I had a order rejected on one of my automated trading systems. Actually, it was four order rejects on two different automated trading systems. Now, these orders were submitted automatically. Uh, there was three, three of the four were market orders, and the fourth one was a stock market. What ended up happening is those orders did not fill, and I ended up losing about 0.9% from those errors, those technical errors which is super frustrating, right? As an algorithmic trader, you have a lot to test, a lot against you, right? You have the whole market, you have testing systems, you're putting a lot of effort day to day, and then one technical error causes you to lose money and you think the market's out to get you, hedge funds are against you, the, the exchange hates you. And I was frustrated, frustrated to, to say the least, but technical errors do happen and they do cost you money. So I wanna explain why my order got rejected and how I'm gonna fix it so that you guys watching can actually implement this fix as well. All right, so on my screen here, I have the rejected orders. This was the 15th, so last week. It was during CPI, and if you guys don't know, CPI is an economic news event. CPI measures inflation, and obviously that's gonna move the market a lot. So at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, I had a stop order that was hypothetically hit, right? If I back tested or checked my SIM account, the stop loss on one of my systems would have hit and would have exited. However, my stop loss live on my live account where the order was submitted to the exchange was rejected, all right? If we read the rejected message, it says rejected order type not permitted while the market is in pre-open. Now, that doesn't make sense, right? Pre-open, well, you know, you were trading at 8.30 a.m. Eastern and futures markets, US futures markets are trading at that time, right? And this was on uh, uh, NASDAQ futures, NQ, E-mini contracts. So that doesn't make any sense. How's the market in pre-open? I believe that's just the error message, but essentially what's happening is the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, that handles the NQ contracts, has so much volatility at that tick on 8.30 AM, um, 8.30 if I could speak, 8.30 um, and zero seconds on that tick, it had so much volatility and so many orders flurried the exchange that it had to stop, basically stop any more orders from coming in so it could figure out how to exchange those orders and get them where they need to be. So my stop order was one of the orders that got rejected. It was probably, you know, had too many orders and they decided to reject me, okay? And they can do that. Now this doesn't happen often, right? I've seen this error before. And in the past, the way to fix it is to just manually sync your account. So what I had to do was a minute later, um, I noticed the error and I went to go sell the contract. However, that cost me money because over that minute, that position was short and, and NASDAQ of course skyrocketed, causing me to lose, I think like 70 points of slippage. I had to manually go and sell that, that order, right? Uh, and that's you know the manual way to fix it. This mis this error, this rejected order for, for, for this type of uh, trading doesn't happen very often. And usually it happens on big news events, okay? Uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern for PPI and CPI, sometimes 10 a.m. for employment or jobless, and then sometimes for FOMC at 2 p.m. Eastern. So yeah, it, it cost me money and it was frustrating. Uh, Ninja, you know, doesn't, I use Ninja Trader for my automated trading. And NinjaTrader allows you to write code to fix this problem, okay? So here's the fix I'm going with, and it's not the common route, right? So the most common route is to check on rejected order. Here it is, yeah. So you could override the on order update function, which is here, uh, and you would check for an error code, right? So the error code, which is passed in, um, the default is, I'm assuming no error, if there's no error. But the error code that would have been submitted would probably be order rejected. I don't think order rejected by risk would be that for that code. But anyways, that would be called. So order rejected, and then you could check if that error code is true, and if it is, resubmit the order, all right? That would be logically, I think anyone watching the solution that they would do. The problem with that, the major problem with that is, what if there's a bug? What if something goes wrong and you start submitting infinite orders, okay? You submit five or 10 orders too many, 
And what if they get filled? And now you're trading much more of a size that you should be, and you're way outside your risk parameters. That's how I think. I always think the worst case scenario. So this is the solution I did not decide to go with. The solution I decided to go with was actually delaying my orders by X amount of seconds. Now I'm testing 10 seconds. Um, maybe I could shorten it, but if I delay all my orders by 10 seconds, what happens is at 8.30, when that CPI hit, um, hypothetically, my stop loss would hit on that tick. But by me waiting 10 seconds, I'm waiting for those, all those bunched up CME orders to fill and then for basically waiting a certain amount of time for those orders to fill. And then what will happen is kind of this, the exchange will go into a green period again where it submits orders, all right? So by waiting 10 seconds, yes, my stop loss will be 10 seconds later. However, I won't have any technical issues and won't have to manually exit the, the trade and the order should be submitted as usual. Market orders can be rejected as well. I got a comment on this because I, I made a short about this as well saying, oh no, market orders can't reject it. They always get filled and that's not true. This was a market order. It was technically a stop market. So the stop price was filled locally on my VPS and then a market order was submitted to the exchange. Uh, market orders can get rejected, okay? Um, so it's not the order type. Obviously limit orders can, can get rejected too and other order types, but it's not the order type. It's just, this is a feature by the CME to help make sure all the trades are exchanged fairly and they do limit traders on these big news events. They, get, they get, just get a flurry of orders and they don't know how to handle it, so they essentially they stop trading for a couple seconds and then resume. My orders after that, right, my orders 30 seconds later and a minute later got filled normally and everything continued the rest of the day. It was just those orders at that 8.30 a.m. zero tick or that first tick of 8.30 a.m. were not filled. So by me waiting 10 seconds, my order should be filled. And I, I've been testing this this week uh, so far it's working, uh, but I need to wait for a big news event. The next big news event, I believe is on Friday at, at 10 a.m. So we'll see about that, but that's a solution I'm, I'm going with. And now you may be asking, okay, well, if you delay your orders by 10 seconds, once you get more slippage, once you lose money, well, I don't know that. I don't know that until I, I try it. So I've been testing it this whole week and monitoring my slippage so far it, it's evening out. What's happening is yes, some of the trades by exiting, by entering 10 minutes later, you know, I get a worse fill price, right? Say I buy and then 10 seconds later, uh, the actual, or the system buys and then on, on a hypothetical scenario, and then 10 seconds later it gets filled in the live account on the exchange. Sometimes the price is worse, right? It's higher if we're going long. However, I'm finding sometimes it's, it's better and it kind of evens out. Sometimes waiting that 10 seconds, you get that dip buy um, and you get a better lower price, lower average price, or if you're shorting, you get a higher price anyways. That, that is a valid concern and I am tracking that, but so far it, it, it evens out. But my goal here is to minimize that risk, minimize that error, because you know I do monitor my trading systems, but by me, me being a minute late, that happened last week, you know, it cost me a lot of money. If I was just 10 seconds late from this automated order delay, might've lost a little bit on slippage on that trade because it moved so much in a minute. However, not as much as me manually exiting that trade a minute later. So that's gonna be my fix, delaying trades. And uh, how I'm doing that is using a trade copier we built. Uh, if you wanna get access to the trade copier, see the links in the description below, uh, encoding great trading bots. And with this new trade copier update, you'll be able to delay, delay your trades by X amount of seconds. Um, so I'm testing with 10 seconds. I might try and lower it. Um, I'm not sure what the ideal value is. Maybe it, it could be three, five, seven. I don't know the timing for the CME on when they kind of give the green light for orders being filled again, uh, but I'm, I'm trying 10 just to be safe for now. I may, I may lower it, but that's gonna be my solution. All my orders across, all my strategies will be late, delayed by 10 seconds. And I'm, I believe from my testing that will reduce all the order reject errors and cause it to never happen again, uh, thus saving me money over the long term. I think that's the best solution and from a technical perspective, there's not much that can go wrong, right? What could go wrong is either my order doesn't submit or it submits too late, right? In terms of technical bugs, but there'll be never an issue of resubmitting infinite orders that could happen with this, you know, on order reject uh, method override. So could this solution work as well? Yes. I mean, I had someone comment saying, okay, what if you put like a limit 
you know, a limit variable in here. So it checks the on order update, it checks reject and only submits it with a, a limit of three or four times until it's filled. That could work as well. It's, I don't know if it's a better or worse solution. It all depends on obviously testing it. And so far with my testing, it's, it's been working. So sometimes you don't want to use what you think is the correct solution. You want to use the best solution that's going to save you the amount of money and not cause technical issues. You want code that works and that's robust, just like your trading systems. And um, I think that the, the delay is a robust solution and I'm willing to potentially accept some money in slippage for the, for the upside of, hey, it's always going to work. My orders are always going to get filled. So that's going to be my solution using that trade copier. Maybe I'll do a separate video on how to code a trade copier with delay, but we've done it in our community at Coding Great Trading Bots. You can see the link in the description below. But this is a problem you might see. You might build trading systems. Uh, I, I, any quantitative trader will see this issue. At some point in their career, one of their trades will get rejected, either due to events like these where you get economic news and there's so much volatility, or maybe you're trying to submit an order outside of the market time or an incorrect order type. At some point, your order will be rejected and you do have to handle it somehow, all right? For a long time, I've been manually handling it where I exit the trade at a future time or enter a trade at a future time if, if a trade did not enter. However, I don't think that's a great solution, especially if there's a delay between you manually entering and exiting. So anyways, that's the video, guys. I hope you found value in today's video about order rejects and how I'm gonna handle this problem with my solution. Let me know in the comments below if your orders have been rejected and if it's cost you money, maybe it's time to implement a fix. Have a good week, guys. Bye.